It's been a while now since we set off on our deserted island getaway package and we're still finding heaps to do. So here are a few tips to help you make the most out of your stay in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Get the most out of your fruit. Your island will spawn one of five types of fruit. And while they may all look different, they all share one trait. They give you magic powers. Well, sort of. Eating fruits will let you destroy rocks that spawn around your island, as well as uproot trees with your flimsy tools. But we might not want that super strength, because with great power comes great responsibility. And that responsibility can go down the drain. Literally! If you have any toilet furniture, sitting on it can get rid of the fruits. And you can go back to whittling away at rocks and trees without fear of destroying or uprooting them. If you've got different fruit from other islands, you may want to sell them at Nook's Cranny, rather than bidaying them goodbye. Timmy and or Tommy buy these non-native fruits from you at a higher price, so it's a good idea to start a small farm of these fruits so every three days you can reap the rewards. An apple a day keeps the dead away. Paint with all the colours of your flowers. Like with fruit, flowers will spawn unique to your island, such as lilies or tulips. Typically, these grow in red, white or yellow, but they come in other colours too. Cross-pollinating your flowers can bear a rainbow of possibilities, like blue roses, purple hyacinths and green mums. The way to do this is to plant your flowers next to each other. I recommend planting them diagonally as this will allow for more space for new flowers. Once they've been planted, water the flowers over the next few days. You'll know they've been drenched when the flowers glisten with dewdrops. Before long, you'll find a new hybrid flower budding next to them. And if you have any Animal Crossing buddies, there's a higher chance your flower will hybrid if it's watered by a friend. Some of the rarer colours are in fact hybrids of hybrids. For example, purple hyacinths require you to breed two orange ones. Hmm, last time I remember, red and blue made purple, not orange and orange. Oh well, a flower by any other name. Quality time with your island villagers. Your villagers will often be out and about on your island, catching bugs, fishing in your rivers, and generally enjoying a fresh island atmosphere. If you don't see them getting around outside, they could be chilling inside their homes. When you visit them, you might see them hammering away at their DIY table, at which point you can talk to them and get a recipe to learn. Outside of DIY recipes, talking to your villagers on a regular basis will also reward you in Nook Miles and their friendship. The best reward of all. As with all friendships, you have to put in a little effort too. These villagers will sometimes give you small tasks or requests that significantly increase your friendship. They could ask you for a particular bug or fish, or returning a lost item to them, even getting them medicine when they're sick at home, and it all contributes to your newfound friendship. As this develops, they can give you gifts or send some by mail. Sometimes it's even bells, or maybe a piece of furniture. Or sometimes it's their weird taste in outfits. Uh, thanks buddy. When your money does grow on trees, not to be confused with Pachira aquatica or Crisula ovata. Money trees in Animal Crossing are trees that grow from planting money in special glowing holes in the ground. If you bury any number between 1,000 and 10,000 bells in these holes, the tree will eventually grow and bear you thrice the amount you buried. However, no matter how much you put in, you'll never get more than three bags of 10k bells, so don't go emptying your pockets into it. As the saying goes, don't bury all of your bells in one ditch. Or something like that. Another place to find bells would be in one of the rocks that appear around your island. Sometimes when it's hit with a shovel, it can give you bells instead of usual stones or nuggets. When mining for those bells, hitting these rocks pushes you back a little bit each time, which can put you out of range of the rock, and you can end up missing it. 
This breaks the combo and instead only lets you get less than the full 8 drops. But you can counter that by putting holes behind you, so even if it pushes you back, it won't push you further than the range of your tools. If you imagine the rock being in the middle of a 3x3 grid, you dig the holes on the outside corners of that grid, making sure you get the most of your money rocks. Playing the stalk market You may have noticed a character named Daisy May who offers to sell you turnips every Sunday at a different price each week. These turnips can be sold at Nook's Cranny for a profit any other day of the week. Tommy and Timmy buy them at a price that changes twice a day, once in the morning and again in the afternoon, and they're not always great. You want to make sure you buy low and sell high. Unfortunately, while you're waiting for that better price, turnips can't be put away in your home storage or even be planted to grow your own, but they can be dropped. So you may need a dedicated space to keep your turnips, maybe a turnip room in your home? or even the space right next to Nook's Cranny for quicker access. However, turnips have a one week shelf life, so if your local Nook's Cranny has abysmal prices, you can check your friend's islands which might have a better price for you, before the turnips rot into withered vegetables, uh, just like real life. Completing your museum's collection our beloved bug-hating night owl Blathers is all too happy to receive the fossils, fish and bugs we give him to display in the museum. But sometimes we forget if we've already given him a yellow perch. Or was it a dace I gave him last time? The Nook phone gives you an app to keep track of all the bugs and fish you've collected. If it has a tiny owl icon next to the name of the item, you've already donated it to Blathers. This icon is a good way to keep track of what you don't have as well. One other way of figuring out if something you've just found is new is that your character always exclaims YES before sharing their witty little pun about the new addition to the collection. So that way you know whether you should probably donate it or if you can just sell it for some extra bells on the side. And while you can sell any duplicates over to Nooks, it's also a good idea to store them somewhere until CJ or Flick comes around. CJ and Flick are another set of characters who have a random chance of appearing on the island. They can buy your stuff at 1.5 times the selling price. Additionally, they hold a challenge that will net you a cool prize if you win. Outside of their challenges, if you give 3 bugs to Flick or 3 fish to CJ, they'll send you a small replica of it in the mail. Another character that can turn up is Jolly Red. He offers you paintings on his very legitimate, not at all suspicious looking ship. Sometimes the paintings you get will be the real deal, but some of them look off. If you're an art aficionado, spotting the fakes will be a piece of cake, but some of them can get really sneaky, so there's no shame in looking up what the painting's supposed to look like to make sure you're not getting duped. Your island getaway, your way to play. At the end of the day, the way you get the absolute most out of your island is by just having fun. Maybe you like to time travel, or play the stalk market, or just take the rewards as they come, playing a little bit each day. You know, there's no right or wrong way to play. So just go, create, explore, and share, my fellow island spawnlings.